I want to start by saying this video is not about calling out Devin Nash. As someone who's been streaming since 2013 and been making content to help streamers for four years, the industry needed someone like Devin for a long time, and I aspire to be as helpful to y'all as he is. But there are a lot of people who come into my chat asking about whether or not they should be an affiliate, and there were a lot of comments on his video of people who said they were canceling their affiliate contracts. This conversation needs more context so that you can make an informed decision. I've heard from a lot of you how much you've loved getting your streaming graphics from Owned. Well, they built something else. Owned Pro is an OBS Studio plugin that makes installing Owned graphics on your stream super easy. All it takes is one click to install any of their included graphics packs. Not to mention, you also get access to music, a chat box, countdown, and more. And you can also get the Studio plugin for freaking free, or sign up for the monthly subscription and get access to any of the 500 plus included graphics, which might actually be a cheaper and easier way of getting those owned graphics that y'all love. Now back to the video. Thank y'all so much, by the way, for watching the videos as much as you do and for actually like clicking on owned links. Y'all are the reason why I get to work with them and other companies. So I just want to say thank you and I love you and let's get into it. So one of Devin's primary arguments for why you shouldn't sign the Twitch affiliate contract is because you cut your stream off of the knees because Twitch does not allow you to multi-stream to other platforms while you are currently live on their platform. Devin makes a really great point where he says that in order to be really successful in your streaming career, you need to collect a bunch of data from different platforms to figure out where you are going to fit the best. And signing the affiliate contract prevents you from being able to get that data that you need. And while I definitely agree with this, multi-streaming is a fantastic way to get data from all of these different platforms that exist. There are ways that you can still collect this data even after you have signed the affiliate contract. Now this does take more time because it requires that you decrease your amount of streaming days on Twitch in order to increase streaming days on other platforms because yes, you still can't multi-stream. This is also something that Devin takes an issue with. I'll get to that here in just a second, but you need to know that just because you signed the affiliate contract doesn't mean that you can't collect this data. So don't freak out. If you have signed the affiliate contract, you're okay. You can still do everything that Devin recommends recommends that you do. But here's the thing. I really believe that yes, while it can be useful to gather all of this data, if you don't build a strong streaming foundation, it doesn't really matter where you take your stream, you can still not become successful. It doesn't matter if you're streaming on a less saturated platform or a platform that's going to support you more. You still need to figure out how to give people value in your streams and other content. So this is why I created a free workbook for y'all. These are the six exercises that I used to figure out who I was serving, who my audience was, and how I could serve them really well. Definitely snag that if you haven't already. Devin's next argument is that you are diluting your brand if you're streaming in multiple places. So if you're streaming one day on Twitch, one day on YouTube, and one day on, I don't know, is Trovo still a thing? Subtle diss. <laughs> Devin's totally right in saying that streaming is an enormous time investment compared to doing things like YouTube or TikTok. Having to sit down and be on and entertain people for four to 10 hours a stream is a lot. And a few years ago, I would have 100% agreed that diversifying your brand across multiple platforms was actually a bad move and that streamers instead should focus on streaming six days a week, 10 hours a stream, because that's what was working to grow creators. However, with the uh, inception of all of these streamer education channels, we have all started to realize the importance of YouTube and other social media platforms for growing streaming brands. And so now now that advice has changed to diversify to multiple platforms. But we've never really talked about diversifying your streaming efforts. And this is something that I think actually has a lot of validity because some people will only watch Twitch, but some people will only watch you on YouTube. 
I don't personally view this as brand dilution. I view this as supporting the diversification of your content across multiple platforms. Streaming one or two days on Twitch and one or two days on YouTube is going to get you in front of people that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten in front of. And while yes, one platform is going to be more successful than the other, you're still generating way more awareness of your stream that wouldn't have existed if you hadn't diversified. This is actually why I'm going to be streaming on YouTube in addition to my weekly Twitch streams because as much as I love Twitch, I know there are a lot of y'all who would prefer to watch me here and I don't want to not give you content from me just because I'm streaming over on Twitch as well. I also want to learn a lot from this experiment and be able to share that information with you. I really believe that you deserve to know whether or not streaming on YouTube is worth your time considering literally every stream educator is telling you to make YouTube videos. Or maybe I'll just burn myself out and go into a content coma for six months. Wouldn't be the first time. Another one of Devin's arguments is that no streamer in the top 10,000 streamers has ever become successful by creating separate streams. Now, as with anything in life, it is really important that you kind of understand the traditional path that most people take. It's usually better for us to operate under the assumption that we are not an exception to the rule. Learning from people who have been successful in the past can also help us prevent a lot of our own embarrassing mistakes. But most of those streamers in the top 10,000 became successful because they had done something that had never been done before. Viewers are always looking for something unique and different. They have a thirst for it. They're always looking for that fresh thing. And traditionally, this has been done through the content that those top 10,000 streamers have created. However, that's not the only way that you can be unique. Streaming in separate places could actually be a huge opportunity for y'all if you do it right. Be an anomaly. Right, Devin? That was so damn cheeky. God. <laughs> One of our students inside of Stream Coach Academy actually started experimenting with this. She usually has about 30 to 40 viewers on Twitch, went over to YouTube and had about 50 to 60 viewers. And a lot of those viewers were talking about how they were going to come over to her Twitch streams because they didn't want to miss hanging out with her. So it's a little early to tell for her exactly how this is going to either support or detract from her Twitch brand. As of right now, it seems like it could be in support, but I can follow up with this in another video for y'all if you want. Just leave a comment down below. I also really love this next point that Devin had, which is that you are worth more than the contract that you sign. Can I just say, yes, thank you, Lord, yes. The fact that every single streamer gives 50% of their business away to Twitch blows my freaking mind. If you walked into Shark Tank and they offered you a deal where they take 50% of your company, you're going to think about that a lot longer than the average affiliate who signs a contract. I really believe that content creators, you guys, y'all deserve so much more from the platforms that you create on. As of right now, most platforms business practices are a little predatory, but this is not the video for that. The truth is that signing the affiliate contract for a lot of y'all feels like a really awesome achievement. And some of you just want the emotes or the ability to have a subscriber because it feels like a step in the right direction. It might not technically be the best business choice, but if you've already signed the contract, you don't have to go back on that just to get all of the data that Devin and myself are encouraging you to get. And even if it is a huge mistake for you to have signed that contract, the only way that we get better as creators and as business people is by making mistakes. That's how we get to the position that Devin is in, is by making a ton of mistakes. I would love to know what mistakes he's made, actually. I bet that would be a really fascinating video. I'm also really curious what y'all feel like your biggest mistake has been on your path to growing your Twitch stream. I would love if you all comment down below and let me know because I wanna take a moment for us to celebrate 
our mistakes and our failures. I really believe that the only way that all of us are going to get to where we want to be is by learning how to keep going even whenever we fail. So if we can take a moment to celebrate all of those and just say, yes, that is one more step in the right direction, I would love to do that. Comment below. There's a lot more context I could add to this conversation, but that should be enough to help you not freak out about the fact that you signed the affiliate contract. And that being said, if you're feeling a little lost after actually signing the affiliate contract, go check out this video where I talk to y'all about what you should do after hitting affiliate. I'll see you over there. Bye!